So I'm on the Savage River this past weekend, mid-morning, I had a couple of hours to spare, and I see some bugs in the air. Not a lot, mostly midges, but a few sulfurs. So naturally, I tie on some dry flies. Now I don't get any action with the midges, but I do get a couple of takes on, I think it was a size 14 sulfur. One of them was a nice fish, but unfortunately, I didn't land either of them. Now, I couldn't tell if the nice fish, I saw him porpoise out of the water. Maybe he rejected the fly or maybe I yanked it out of his mouth. But either way, two hours on the water and I go home skunked. So I'm driving back. I'm totally humbled when I'm just thinking there's no reason I shouldn't have caught any fish on that particular day. And I just realized that I was being stubborn. Why was I fishing dry flies for two straight hours when if I'd have thought about it, I would realize the fish were probably eating salt, uh, eating emergers maybe sulfur mergers, maybe anything, because the rises weren't loud and splashy on top. I mean, there were a few that were, but mostly they were dimpled rises or just when you, you see the tail of the fish come out and you see the rings coming off of it. So had I not been so stubborn and decided to just, you know, try some wet flies, I probably would have had a better day. So I have decided that I need to get smarter on fishing wet flies. Now I've got plenty of books on wet fly tactics, but first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to YouTube and I look up, you know, how to swing wet flies. And Peter Charles, Hook for Life Fly Fishing, he's got a great channel and a couple of really good videos on it that I watched today. Now, if you don't follow or subscribe to Peter Charles' channel, check him out. I'll link to it in the description. I don't know Peter personally, but he seems like a pretty good guy and he's got a great channel, both fishing and tying. So anyway, I have decided that I'm gonna devote my next few fishing trips to getting better at fishing wet flies. And I think my next few videos will be devoted to tying these old school wet flies. Now I'm gonna start with a pretty simple one. I found it David Klausmeyer's favorite flies. This one's called the Partridge and Hare's Ear. Now it's a really simple pattern, just two materials if you don't count the wire rib got a Hungarian partridge or, you know, any partridge, and then some hare's mask. And I'm gonna go with three different colors. Got natural and then a dyed olive and then a rusty orange, which I think will imitate most of the bugs and the waters that I fish. So please let me know in the comments if you fish these type wet flies and I'll let you know how I do with them next week. So there it is, a partridge and hare's ear. Pretty simple yet still kind of an elegant looking wet fly. Now, per the recipe in Klaus Meyer's book, sizes for this, 12 to as big as a six. I'm gonna go on the small side. This is a 12, it's one extra long, one extra strong barbless wet fly hook. I'm using a rusty brown thread, which, yeah, okay, that means orange. So I'm gonna take it back to about the point of the hook. Now, I don't know why this is the case, but a lot of wet flies like this don't have really long extended bodies they kind of stop right there about the point. Now I'm gonna take my thread back up to the, pretty close to the front, catch in my gold wire. And this is a size brassy. Recipe says use a size small. And if you recall, a brassy is a size between a small and medium. And I didn't have this color in a small, so I'm going with the brassy. And it turned out to look just fine. So leave your thread in the back, put a good bit of wax on it. And I've got a dyed orange hair's mask. So this thing right here, and I'm using my hairline dubbing kind of rake knife to pull some out. It made it quite easy. Now I'm not gonna put a big noodle on here, not very thick, but probably kind of long. So I'm gonna put this on thin and maybe three or more inches if I can get it, because it'll, it'll take a good bit to get up there even as thin as we are putting it. Okay, so I got a pretty long noodle. This is about four inches. I couldn't get it a whole lot farther than that or longer than that. So we'll see if this gets us all the way up here to where we want to stop the, the body. Okay, I think that did. That's about how long a body I want. Now I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this rib up and space it however you think a bug of this size, you know, might be segmented probably six wraps or so in this size 12. Okay, let's catch it off up here. And this is a brassy wire, so it's a little thicker. I don't wanna snip it with my wire or scissors. So I'll just put some tension on this thread right here and it'll helicopter off well enough. 
couple extra wraps to get this area ready for the hackle. And the hackle, just small Hungarian partridge. Natural color right here. I'll pull some back, create a little tie-in point. We'll catch it in with two or three wraps right here. I'm gonna fold that back with a couple more wraps to secure that. Now we do have to snip this tip. And this feather's pretty small, so I'm gonna need my hackle pliers here. And I'm gonna get two wraps. Probably couldn't get much more than that, but I wouldn't really want more than that. So let's do two, and I don't really necessarily want them swept way back. Maybe swept a little bit back, but you know, I kind of going for the spider look right here. And I will lick my fingers. I am going to have to pull a few of these back. I don't really like that one. I'm going to snip that one in a second. So we'll go with these right here. And those little stubs up front. I'm going to just pluck those out here in just a second. Okay. Will they come out with my tweezers? I don't know. We'll see. They kind of did. Got a few nubs right here we can take care of. You can either bury that or singe it off or just try to hide it and not worry about it. If it's a fish and fly, I'd probably do the latter. So there we go. Let's put some a whip finish on here and see if we got any cleanup. Okay, now I do have those little stubs. You see those? And that would be a little bit annoying. It could hinder with putting the, a tippet in there. So I'm gonna take my singeing tool and just touch it to it right here. And then just try to melt those. Don't touch your thread. You'll, you'll send your thread too if you're not careful. But I think we got that eye clean enough to get our tippet through there. So I'm gonna put a drop of head cement on it, call this guy done. So that's it my friends, I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.